Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the new data table control available in Power Apps Canvas app. So here's the data table that only displays dataverse data. In addition, you have the option to go and change some of its behavior. Also, you can only do a cell level selection, do a control C, and then paste that into C a text control. Pretty awesome. So something to keep in mind that this is under preview, which means you don't want to start using it in production, but you definitely want to get yourself familiar with it. So stick around, there's a lot to learn. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Here I am in my Power Apps Canvas App Studio, and as you can see, I have my modern controls over here. So if I go and click OK, you can see that these are the modern controls that are showing up. And if for some reason you do not see it on your side, there will be two reasons for that. One of them is you want to go into your settings, you want to go to your support, click on the edit, and then go ahead and try to get the latest version that you have, the latest authoring version. Because more than likely you are in the recommended one, but if you want to start seeing some of these new features, you want to go to the latest authoring version that is available to you. So that's number one. Once you go ahead and do that, then go and click on the upcoming features, under preview, scroll all the way to the bottom. It's not completely at the bottom, but kind of goes as much as you can. And in your case, the modern controls and themes, that will be toggled off. You want to go and toggle that on. And the moment you do that, you will immediately see the modern control over here, all right? So that's how you basically go and get some of these modern controls. Remember, these are under preview, which means that you look, play, get yourself familiar with it. Just don't go production yet, all right? Just be a little patient. All right, so I've actually done a video on this. I've put that link in the description below. Um, and so I went and walked through quite a few of these things. But the two new ones, I'll just call out the two new ones, is the ones that I actually saw was the table, which specifically says Dataverse only, and then the toggle. The toggle really didn't have too much new that I want to focus on. That's for in this one, I'll actually focus on just the Dataverse tables. However, if you're interested in me talking about the toggles, put it in the description below, and I'll cover that as well. So in this table for Dataverse only, when I go and click on it, I see the table show up over here. Now, I'll tell you one thing. I did try to go ahead and put in a SharePoint list, and it did show up for a momentary period of time, and then it went blank. So I'm going to stick with what it says, which is Dataverse only, because then it actually worked. Um, so for my sake, I actually have a few Dataverse tables. So I'm going to actually go and go to my Dataverse site, and in my Dataverse tables, I'll click on See All Tables, and I'll do actually, you can either do a search for it, or you can basically just go and do, click on it. So in my case, I've got this potluck signups. So I'm going to go and click on that, and the moment I do that, the table actually appears. Some of these columns show up over here, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and add more columns, all right? So I'm going to click on this edit, um, and I'll go ahead and some add more fields. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do desserts, dyes, main dish, um, and I'll just go ahead and keep it as is. Uh, in fact, I just want to remove this created on. That way it just doesn't get too complicated. I'll remove the created on, and I'll keep it. So now I actually have my data showing up on this new table. A uh, couple of things I immediately noticed was, obviously, it has got a little better, nicer design, but on the bottom left, it immediately showed me how many rows of data do I have? And it's already telling me, hey, you've got at least 500 more. Now, on the right side in the properties, that's where I started noticing some of the new interesting things going on. Um, so we've got the items, we've got the you know, views, because your Dataverse table could have more views, that's great. Uh, you can go ahead and do the view, uh, the fields, any of the fields that you want, which we just used. But the allow range selection, this is the default property that was already there. And if I click on it, you've got two. You've got allow range selection, and it's by default yes, or it's no. What does that actually mean? So when we talk about range, it always goes towards the range of the cells. Because your table will always have columns, it will have rows, but it also has the cells. And what are the range of that cells? So in this case, it's saying allow range selection. So what does that actually mean? Well, I'll show you, because check this out. This I found very awesome. So now I'm in the view, and if I go and hover over it, it, you know, it goes ahead and at least says what I'm hovering on, so that's pretty neat. If I select it, the entire row gets selected, and on the bottom, it's telling me, hey, you've gone ahead and selected one. But that allow range, this is what it does. So check this out, right? On the top left cell, I've got my mouse hovering on that, and now with my left click, I've got it selected, and I'm going to click on down. 
All right, it is still selected down. And as I go hovering down, you can see that that cell is getting selected. But not only can I go on the vertical side, which is basically on the columns, but I can start going to the right and I can start going and hovering it. So I'm basically selecting different cells, different range of the cells, a feature that is available in this new table, which wasn't there before. This really got me excited because check this out. If I now close out over here and say, I'm going to go and reduce the size of this table, the height a little bit, right? That's good. Um, let's just say that in this uh, um, modern one, I go and grab a text input. All right, so I'm going to go and grab this control over here, text control, make it nice and big all the way over here. You know what? Let's go and change the mode from a single line to a multiple line. So keep this ready. Now let me show you that one neat feature, right? So I'm again going to select just this one cell, went ahead and highlighted the entire row, which is fine, but I'm going to keep it selected. Come say all the way to the right, right over here. I've selected these cells. I do a control C on my keyboard. Now if I paste down and I do a control V, I only get those cells of data. So I'm able to now specifically pick and choose what I want from this table while the Canvas app is actually being used and I can do some copying and pasting. This feature was not available before. So think about how I don't even have to go and give the users the filtering just to see what they want or pick what they want. The users directly in the Canvas app have the flexibility that, okay, if all this data is there, I just want to go and grab vanilla ice cream and I want to grab what the diet it is, do a control C, I can come down over here, do a control V, I can just paste it. So imagine what other flexibility and what other options that you have to go ahead and now implement this into your Canvas app. But, but let's not just stop over here. Let me just show you a few other features. So if I go and X out of this one um, and I go back to the settings, for some reason, if you don't want to allow that range selection, that's completely fine. You come back over here to the properties and you go and select no. What that basically does is now if I go and do all of this, I don't have that range selection anymore. So with the even though I've actually gone ahead and selected the top left, all right, I've gone and selected that. If I go and actually hold the mouse's left button down, and if I'm going down, you see, it's not doing that selection anymore, right? So that's basically an important thing is I have that setting feature available right over here, which was the allow drain selection. By default, it is yes. Um, I can go and set that as no. All right, so in the reflow behavior, by default was reflow. You also have the grid only. The grid only basically allows you to only see all the data as a grid. So I didn't find this part too new. It was something that we were already familiar with, very similar to what it was there before. But the third option is what caught my attention. So again, selecting the actual table, if I go to my behavior section, if I go and click on list only, the overall effect changes. So I can now see basically all the information. So if there was a user and the user actually had a profile name and a picture, well, that shows up over here. And then it also respects all the fields that you selected. Because if you think about it, these are actually all the fields that I have. So it is, it is able to go ahead and give me that information. So it's actually doing a fairly good job on going ahead and displaying all this information. Um, I really like this view. I do feel that there is a need for the list only as well. But, but right now, my personal favorite was definitely going back to the original reflow and then the allow drain selection because that was pretty awesome. And I'm really glad that this feature is coming out. They're going and giving you a preview of it uh, because we've always wondered that if we went and take a look at the insert, go back into the classic, we have had in the layouts, this section called as data table. And it was on preview for quite some time. And if I went and actually selected the same thing, it gave me this, I would say, not so clean appeal to it. Uh, didn't definitely have any of these features and functionalities. Like I'm actually holding the shift button down. None of that is happening didn't have the same appeal that this modern table has. The modern table not just looks good, but man, it has a whole bunch of features and functionalities. And that is why I'm really looking forward for this thing to go live. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.